Well, Christian Eriksson has gone ahead to hail Marcel Sabitza of how he has gone ahead to really sit into his boots for the many months he has been away <coughs> ever since, I think was it the 28th? I think it was the 28th, 28th of January when he found himself injured by that taco coming in from Roy Caro. Welcome to this channel. Rock and David is my name. Good morning. Match day today. We are playing away in Sevilla and Ten Hag is going to have to throw in a little bit of... <coughs> A little bit of of topics and uh, a little bit of topics onto all hot topics of how he expects to pick up his starting eleven and so on and so forth. Then <clears throat> even Ericsson has gone ahead to draw deep into Bruno Fernandes' suspension and how the midfield of United looks like is the best into the league and it looks like this is the best midfield Ericsson has ever played in <coughs> ever since the season really started or ever since he started his career smash the like button comment and share if at all you're watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily again i would like to thank you congratulations to everyone that's gonna hate to be part of this journey <coughs> i think yesterday about one we hit 12,000 subscribers and let's continue spreading the love of really subscribing to this channel now let's get into <coughs> the ericsson story he said sabitza has done unbelievable while we've been away <coughs> he said everyone tries to do their job tries to fit to fit in as well as possible fred has done well and scott mctominy when he was playing i think we've played with them all but I've only trained a few times with Marcel Sabitza because he came in after I was injured. He's a very, very good player. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, quality, quality complements quality. You know, when you look at Marcel Sabitza, he's having quality that is far apart from Scott McTominay and Fred. <clears throat> you know, if Ericsson is out and you're having Fred, and Scott McTominay to come in and do his job, that is what we call a huge drop-off. You know, you downgrade a lot. But if at all Sabitza is in there, obviously there is no downgrade because everything that Ericsson does, Sabitza can do it. And it has showed you that at the beginning of the, the spell of Sabitza at Manchester United, he was a little bit struggling because he was not playing with Casemiro. He has not been having that privilege to play alongside with Casemiro. And he was playing with Fred, Scott McTominay, and Bruno Fernandes, you know? And stability had not yet gone in until the manager said that now I'm going to get Sabitza to play ahead of Bruno Fernandes. And then Bruno Fernandes to play in the double pivot with Scott McTominay or Fred as we wait for Casemiro to come back. And that has gone ahead to work out like a book. <clears throat> Or like a, like like it has gonna have to work out like a charm for Eric Ten Hag, and I think Ericsson knows the qualities of Sabitza, and Sabitza is really a very good player. And uh, I had some people coming out and saying, "Rokani, no, Sabitza cannot play at Manchester United because he cannot bench Fred." You know, <clears throat> I gave them what we call a retract that when Casemiro came in here, <clears throat> you had the same thoughts about Casemiro that. He's not up to the standards of the Premier League. Scott McTominay looks like he's playing a better job than him. I told you guys, that guy is here just for two weeks. He's just trying to find himself in a position of getting to know these players. And by the time he gets to know these players fully, he'll be in a position of <coughs> really fitting to that team and fit there very well. And now, those days that Sabitza was sometimes benched and Freddy started come to an end because the manager just wanted Sabitza to get used to this team and right now he has gotten used to this team and is undroppable no way you are dropping Sabitza because he has gone ahead to show you that when you play him in the central attack midfield position he ran into good spaces and score you goals Sabitza is having three goals this season with an assist you know those are four goal involvements I believe in his stay at Manchester United he might even score 10 goals this season because he finds himself in better scoring positions in the field of play. So to me, it comes to my understanding that Ericsson is doing a very good job at the club of Manchester United, but having a player in the same galaxy with him is very important, you know? And with Casemiro, there, 
I think Sabitza is going to erupt more and more and more. He's really going to put out a statement that every person who was doubting his efforts of keeping him permanently at Manchester United <coughs> will eat his words and say, all right, we need Sabitza, the club of Manchester United. You know, he's a player that you'll need at the club of Manchester United. When Ericsson is away, he can do the job. When Bruno Fernandes is away, he has showed us that he can do the job. So, why not why not get such a player and sign him permanently? And Ericsson is telling you that I've not yet trained, I've not yet played with him, you know, but I've trained with him for a few days, but he's a very, very good player. And I just can't wait to see that double pivot of Ericsson and Casemiro having Sabita playing ahead of them. That's it. That's my dream. And I think we might see it today in Sevilla as that trio, that midfield trio playing together because I expect massive destruction. You know, Ericsson, Casemiro, Sabitza, <laughs> that quality is really huge. And without Bruno Fernandes, <clears throat> we might see it at the beginning of the game or later in the game, depending on how the game situation is going to be, if <clears throat> Eric Ten Hag decides to start Fred and Ericsson to be played into the double pivot, sorry, in the central attack midfield position of Manchester United. So Ericsson knows it that we are having a very quality player, though he has gone ahead to really put in Scott McTominay and Fred because he knows how much they would have failed if at all he never really put them into this statement. But he has not talked about Bruno Fernandes in this statement, nor Casemiro, because they all know how good they are for the club. But Fred and Scott McTominay, I believe they are a downgrade. They are players that we shouldn't be having at Manchester United. You happen to bring in Sabitza, and a player who can act as a CDM, I think we should take them off. We should take them off the club. Do you know why? Bruno has gone ahead to show us that he can play in the double pivot very well. If at all there is a certified CDM playing alongside him, then why keep Fred and Scott McTominay? I'm of a view, Fred and Scott McTominay should be sold. If at all you can get £60 million pounds from the sale of that pair, then we can get in Sabitza, then another midfielder to come in through and really help us. That means we'll be having Casemiro, <clears throat> Ericsson, Sabitza, Bruno Fernandes, and that new brought in midfielder, and obviously a player called Donny van de Beek. If I told you are having six midfielders around us next season, I think the 70 games that Eric Ten Hag is planning for us to play next season won't be <clears throat> won't be won't be a huge mountain to climb. According to me, it will be something soft for us to climb to get us to the levels that we expect us to be. So I think all that in the name of Ericsson, I buy it in him praising Sabitza. Marcel Sabitza is a very, very good player. Then Ericsson said, I didn't even know we had that many games without losing, but it's obviously something in the future when Bruno isn't suspended that you want to keep going. I think this midfield is one of the best I've been part of. As as I said after the Forest game, they are two very good footballers. So for me, it's easy and I think for anyone to fill in that extra gap between them has been easy. So he was asked the question about them <clears throat> winning very many games when they are playing the midfield three of Casemiro, Ericsson and Bruno Fernandes. And he went ahead and really said that it's one of the best midfielders going ahead to play in in his career and obviously he's right because when you look at Spurs <clears throat> he had um, Dembele, Modric and him but Modric later left so I think having a midfield when you're having Casimir and Bruno Fernandes in I think you find yourself in a better position to really excel and I think he's going to enjoy more when he's playing with Sabitz alongside Casimir because the way <clears throat> they really think is really almost the same. Their football intelligence is almost at the same wavelength that will help them really extend more <clears throat> of their football of their football ascendances to the levels we expect them to be. So Ericsson <clears throat> is really a player that we've missed out. But what made us feel like we missed Ericsson is the seven games that uh, Casemiro never never went ahead to play. But thank God <clears throat> We won, is it five? I think we won five. Yeah. We won five, lost one, and drew one. We won against Leeds. We won against um, Everton, Leicester City, 
uh, which other game? There are some five games we won without him. We lost to Newcastle and drew with our... We drew with which team? There, we're not having Casemiro. So I think if Casemiro was around and we're having Sabitz and Bruno Fernandes, I think it would have been a different game altogether. But Casemiro being away and Ericsson being away, it was really a bismo for us as a team of Manchester United. Now, Ten Hag has also gone ahead and we talked about choosing the starting eleven today in Sevilla. He said, I don't have a headache. Some players came to train after their injuries today so we have to wait for their reactions and then tomorrow we'll take decisions so we have our scenarios and plan we have to win the game so ten hag has only one option going in the stadium in severe and get three points knock them out proceed to the semi-final because this is a tournament that we lit our our appetite of winning it when you knocked out barcelona <coughs> Knocking out Barcelona from this tournament, that means no team should stop you. You know, with the return of Ericsson, Casimiro, no, with the return of Malasia, uh, Sabitza, Luke Shaw, and Malasia, that's a huge, a huge indicator that we need to win this game of football. And having a variety of players is a dream of every manager, and our appetite should be high to win this game of football and obviously knock a team known as severe out at their ground we have to respect them but i think they have to fall on the sword of Manchester united that's it they have to be beaten today because we are going to attack them on all fronts i don't think marcus rashford will start but if at all if even if he starts rashford martial anthony tonight oh my god that's an overdose for severe i think we should tear them apart in the first 30 minutes we should be like three goals up that's it. A statement should be sent to them that you have a, a game to play over the weekend. You have to play against Brighton men. You have to play against Brighton in the, in the FA Cup. So we have to find ourselves in a position of really winning that game in the limited period of time possible such that the manager can make some changes like <clears throat> take off Marcus Rashford, <clears throat> all Martial, and you bring on Sancho, you know, bring on the likes of the Freds to play part in that game. Um, and other substitutes that won't really see us capitulate again to invite pressure like we did at Old Trafford. So I think Ten Hag is going to manage this game in a much more better way, but I think he has a lot of guns or weapons to take at <clears throat> to take at Sevilla to really get three points. I don't want extra time. I just want us to get three points. Then Ten Hag said they are really looking forward to do it. I think the spirit is fantastic. We know why we are here. Last week, we drew today we have to win because we want to go further and these players of united know it that if at all they are to really make a trophy parade they have to win they have to go ahead and really win they have to go ahead and really win a cup of another trophy <laughs> that's it ten hag said if they win another trophy <clears throat> then a trophy parade will be called in for if they don't no trophy parade now the players of united know it very well that if they are to win if they are to really get what we call a trophy parade of which they want to put in the city of Manchester, they have to win a trophy. And to me, if I told you, tell me which trophy should we win, I want all of them. One will say FA Cup. No, no, I want us to win F an FA Cup. I want us to win the UEFA Europa League because we have a squad that can help us do that. Not so. We have it. So for me, I'm calling in for us to win all those trophies. I want us to win them. Let's knock out Sevilla, you know. We wait between the winner, Real Sociedad, no. We wait between the winner of Sporting Lisbon and Juventus. <clears throat> we play them in the semi-final. And by the time we play the semi-final, the run will be available. I think that double encounter will be so much important. Then, <clears throat> by the time we play the final against Man City, if at all we knock out Brighton over the weekend, of which I know we are going to beat them at, at Wembley, we win the trophies, you know. Do you know the feeling we are going to get if at all we win all those trophies? And we are having three trophies onto that track, you know, and doing that trophy parade in Manchester. And one of those trophies will be gifted to us or will be given to us after knocking out Man City in the finale. Best feeling ever. So, guys, your thoughts on to Ericsson hailing Marcel Sabitza are really welcome in the comment section below. What do you think about Ericsson Hag saying that we need to win this game of football? And obviously, 
something else that you've got out into the story that you need to drop down into the comment section below. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Rock and David remains my name. First story of the day, done and dusted. I'm returning with the story of Ganacho, Ganacho being referred to as the new Kylian Mbappe. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I sign out for now. See you later as my Muslim friends. It is either tomorrow or Saturday. Ramadan Karim and Eid Mubarak in advance.